Welcome back everybody. Today's lesson is mostly going to be a whiteboard lesson regarding the math of motor, brake, and water horsepower, but I thought it'd be really a powerful demonstration to come out into the plant and show you um, physically the difference um, among those three, okay? So what you're seeing right here is the pump motor. Um, it's built drive here. Um, I won't get into that, but um, this is the pump shaft and the pump impellers are inside the pump casing here, okay? Um, oftentimes when you hear us talk about submersible pumps, there's an implication that there's a motor attached to it. Um, and and uh, if you go back and look at my pump and motor, uh, my very first one video, I'll link to it at the end of this. You can click on it, go watch it. Um, it'll show up on your screen. Go check out um, the submersibles. You can't see all this. It's all in the casing. So um, it looks like one big unit. But yeah, there's there's a motor, there's a pump shaft, and there's pump impellers, okay? So when we're talking about motor horsepower, we're talking about the horsepower delivered right there to the motor. Okay, see that electrical conduit coming in? This is going to be your highest number because you're gonna have efficiency scrub. You have to turn things and there's a belt here and then there's another shaft down here with pulleys. So once we get to the pump shaft itself, now we're talking about brake horsepower. When, so when you're talking about a motor that is, you know, let's say it's 10 horsepower motor, which this isn't as much smaller than that, but let's say it's a 10 horse motor, that's 90% efficient. Um, so that's gonna be 10 horsepower there. That's gonna be nine horsepower there. Okay, and then when you get into the water horsepower, now we're talking about pump efficiency, so we just talked about motor efficiency. Now we talk about pump efficiency, we're talking about the difference between brake and water horsepower. What's that? So brake horsepower is the horsepower delivered to the shaft, and the water horsepower is the horsepower um, needed to theoretically move the water. It's the horsepower at the impellers, in essence, that's actually pushing. There's a math equation for that we're gonna go over, but you're gonna have an efficiency scrub there. And uh, yeah, so I wanted to just bring it out in the plant and show you physically motor horsepower, brake horsepower, and water horsepower. Just one more time, motor horsepower is delivered to the motor, efficiency scrub, brake horsepower to the pump shaft, efficiency scrub, things are spinning, blah, 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 and friction and whatnot. And then you got water horsepower, which is actually pushing the water. So let's go to the whiteboard and let's get to the math of this. And welcome to the whiteboard segment. Um, if you're getting anything out of this video so far, or you get anything out of this math problem, please like, subscribe, pass to your friends. Let's help folks get certified. Um, these math problems for the horsepower don't tend to show up until your intermediate or advanced level um, exams because it's not as much of a big deal in a wastewater plant until you start getting into um, operating costs and power usage and things of that nature. Wastewater operators are not mechanics typically. You are not normally, you know, lining up shafts and doing things like that and phase balancing and all that. You tend to be more process. So that's why it won't show up so soon. Now, if you know a drinking water distribution operator who's, um, who need, might need this, please send it to them because they do get drilled on this quite a bit. Um, so on that note of operating costs, I've already done a video where I actually break down a pump efficiency and convert it to kilowatt hours and all that stuff. So if you want to go uh, check that out, it's in the links below um, in the description. So go, go watch that. And that is um, going to be pulled right out of an advanced level math problem. And I'm also going to do another math problem soon. Sorry, I'm just kind of telling you what I'm up to um, soonish on the cost of running um, a new, more efficient motor and how the energy savings will pay off the cost of replacing the old motor. That That is a math problem you'll run into on your, your grade four California or grade five, your class A's, that kind of stuff. Um, okay. So what I've done here is I've created this math equation um, where we're going to actually be specking out a pump um, and we're going to have to decide how big a pump we need to put in. Okay. Now, the other thing is um, you may get it the opposite way where they give you um, that a pump has got this much horsepower and you have to go figure out the water horsepower based off of pump and motor efficiency. You just do it reverse of what I'm going to show you and I'll point out what that reverse is here in a minute. Um, a couple constants you should know if you do not know this already one psi one pound per square inch equals 2.31 feet of vertical head so 2.31 foot whatever that is column of water would have one psi on the bottom all right one horsepower equals 33 foot pounds per minute i explained that in my um, math problem that's going to be in the links below with operating costs tdh means total dynamic head and its constant is 3,960 when you're doing this math problem. There's a constant. And what that is, is um, one horsepower divided by the weight 
of a gallon of water. So 33,000 divided by 8.34. It's not exactly 3960, but that's the number they use on the conversion sheet. And 3960 is the number that's used in all the math. So just 3960. If you're given PSI instead of head and you're given a flow and PSI, 1715 is that number. And that comes from uh, 3960 divided by 2.31 um, feet per one PSI. So total dynamic head is in feet per uh, one PSI. And so that would be 3960 divided by 2.31 is 1715. So I'm giving it to you in total dynamic head. If it's given to you in PSI, you use 1715 instead of 3960. Any questions about that? Comment, please. Okay, um, here's the math problem. You are purchasing a pump that needs to move 200 gallons per minute with a total dynamic head of 100 feet. The pump is 90% efficient and the motor is 95% efficient. What size motor in horsepower will be needed? So first is water horsepower. This math problem is very simple. I'm not gonna go through the whole conversion factor method on it. When you're given equations that are this simple, I don't worry about canceling out um, units, okay? So it is flow in gallons per minute times TDH, total dynamic head in feet, divided by 3,960. Again, if this was in PSI, it would be the flow in GPM multiplied by whatever the PSI was that they gave me, divided by 1715, uh, okay? So our water horsepower in this case is I've got 200 gallons per minute and 100 foot of total, total dynamic head divided by 3960. If you just plug that in your calculator, it's 5.1 horsepower. Boom, we just did water horsepower. Very simple math equation, not hard at all. Okay, now we've got to parse out a couple things here. Um, the pump is 90% efficient and the motor is 95% efficient. Okay, so when you're given this, um, we're going we're gonna to assume we're not specking out a motor. Say you get a brake horsepower math problem and you're given the pump and the motor efficiency, you use the pump efficiency to figure out brake horsepower. You use the motor efficiency to figure out motor horsepower, the difference between brake and motor. You use pump efficiency for water and brake. Okay, I hope that's clear. So if you go back to the beginning of the video, you'll see that water horsepower is at the impellers, brake horsepower is at that pump shaft, and so there's an efficiency scrub there. Okay, so if you're figuring out brake horsepower and they give you both efficiencies, you use the pump efficiency, okay? Because the motor's already delivered its power to the pump shaft. Why do you need to know motor efficiency? That's not relevant, okay? They'll do that, they'll give you both. So just know which one's which. Um, okay, so now I'm gonna figure out brake horsepower, which is 5.1, it's 5.05, but I rounded to 5.1. 5.1 horsepower divided by 0.9, 90%, the pump is 90% efficient, gives me 5.7 horsepower is my brake horsepower, okay? And my motor is 95% efficient. It's gotta spin, it's gotta do its stuff. Here's friction, we live, in the, we live in the, uh, on a planet with air molecules that cause friction, it happens. So 5.7 horsepower, which is my brake horsepower divided by 0.95 is six horsepower. I need a six horsepower motor for this pump. Now we're not getting to pump curves, we're not getting into all that, just this is a very typical math problem on a wastewater and a drinking water distribution exam. You might see this on your treatment for drinking water as well. Um, this is a typical figure out water horsepower, brake horsepower, motor horsepower. Now, kind of preview on purchasing a new one and you know the replacement cost math problem, which you do you will run into on your higher level exams. I can almost guarantee it. Um, your, say your pump is 80% efficient, your motor is 85% efficient. We're gonna use those same numbers, and this is gonna show you how your, your costs really inflate if your efficiencies go down. So my same water horsepower, I need the same amount of water horsepower to move that. Just because my pump and motor are less efficient doesn't mean uh, it, that's changed. So it's 5.1 horsepower divided by now a pump efficiency of 0.8 and a motor efficiency of 0.85. When you're giving it like this and you're looking for motor, Horsepower, you can just boom, go right across like I did. So 5.1 divided by 0.8 divided by 0.85 equals 7.5 horsepower. That's a big difference, okay? So that's gonna be a more expensive motor than that to buy. And um, that's gonna be uh, more expensive to run. Okay, there's a conversion of one horsepower is 0.746 kilowatts. Now, if you go to that operating cost math problem, I'm gonna explain the difference uh, or explain the conversion and then how we come up with kilowatt hours, which is how power is billed. Electricity is billed in kilowatt hours. So um, you need to go look at that. I'm not gonna explain it right here. So if 
this were flipped on its head and I was given a motor, a six horsepower pump um, that is 95% efficient and they may stop there. What's my water horsepower? If they just stop at, and they're asking for water horsepower and they give you the pump horsepower, like six, six, they give you the motor horsepower and then they give you 95% efficient, they stop, what's the water horsepower? All you would do is six times 0.95 because I guess there's an assumption there that the motor is so efficient, it's practically 100% efficient, okay? Um, that'll happen on the operating cost as well. The, they oftentimes give you just one and you just use the one efficiency. They give you two efficiencies, you gotta know which one to use, okay? I'm gonna review it one more time. If I'm going from motor to water horsepower, if they give me um, the pump and the uh, motor efficiency, I got to use both. If they want brake horsepower and they give me the pump and the motor efficiency, I only use the motor efficiency to go to brake horsepower. I don't use the, the I'm trying to figure out what's being delivered to the shaft. The, the pump efficiency is irrelevant in that case. Okay, They do that kind of stuff. And then the other way around, if I'm trying to find out brake and I have water horsepower, I use the pump efficiency, not the motor efficiency. Because again, the motor's not involved. It's the brake horsepower is what's being delivered to the shaft, if that makes sense. Um, and also, motor horsepower is always greater than brake horsepower is always greater than water horsepower. I should say, motor horsepower is greater than or equal to brake horsepower is greater than or equal to water horsepower. Because, you know, you could have some 100% efficiency thing. But yeah, it's typically highest, middle, lowest. All right, if you have any questions, please ask. Um, if you have anything to add, if you think I didn't uh, explain it very well or you have a different way to explain that, please put it in the comments below. Um, I'd love to hear other people weigh in. And with that, we'll catch you in the next one. Have a great day, everybody.